Our seventh speaker of the evening is an indigenous poet, writer, and artist from the Nakota First Nation. His work focuses on justice issues, theology, and indigenous spirituality. Please welcome T.J. Snow. Hello, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me for Pam Rocker. Uh, she is my co-worker. She invited me to come out and do this. So now she owes me. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Uh, I thought a bit about this, and then I thought about what I wanted to say um, with the open season, and also looking at Canada 150. But also, uh, I watched the news a lot about what was happening with um, Las Vegas, and this kind of came out. So I'm a. Do a lot of writing. Do a lot of uh, performance works, and so this is just my response open season. Rising from the stew of our uncertainty, this calls us into being, one world beginning into the next, our people drawn out onto the land, into creation, the creation story. We traverse the riddles of time, the billows of common talk, to sit with an elder, Ina. In a solemn remembrance, she says, all seasons are holy. She reminds me that this is the season of preparation, before the long winter months, time of reflection of our year's undoing, dismantling time to gather what we have learned. Our traditions remind us to consecrate our covenant with creation, with suffering and toil. We must work for this stewardship, for a belief when the world was whole. We open the season with a frame of remembering we remember creation. We remember our creator. We remember the blessings of our time amongst one another to bear witness to this creation, to remember that this season is holy. And it is one part of the cycle that flows through our lives. We remember our creation story, the memories we tell ourselves at the end of time. This is the season that opened your journey into a country that arose around you unexpected. Your birth foretold for generations a season that started as all things started, with ceremony, with a pipe and a prayer and a dream of a pact and a promise. This is 1877, open season. It was too late when we realized it was open season on our lands. When negotiation became desecration and a people lost meaning, of the seasons in totality, with the loss of space, the loss of beginnings, the loss of endings, too many to count from disease, neglect, from broken hearts. The open season became something sinister and new. This is 1958, when you needed to pass not just to leave, needed to pass not just to leave the borders of this country, but to leave your reservation, a special Indian pass to leave your homeland, to leave your traditional territory. This was a different kind of open season, an open season on your right of mobility, an open season on your right of access. To exist outside the dioramas and extinction narratives, it was open season on your movement into a larger world where you could join the burgeoning story of humanity this open season seems to have gone on for a long time. Generations passed. With an agreement opened, its tasks unfulfilled. You journeyed where my people could not go, far from where my people were supposed to stay. Tracking your movements, so the story goes. You traveled to seminary in Arizona for an education. Truly one of the only places you could go, being one of our one of our only educated, ordained, you were thrust into destiny, a place among leadership, struggles to balance with a world often hostile to your intents. You fought the season as a minister. You fought the season as a chief. You smoked a pipe with royalty and made entreaties with the crown to renew the <coughs> covenant and bring back the life, the relationship that should have been the memories of a season's past, 
the negotiations turning fragile into a landscape of falling memories lost to old age. We forget our pact, forget our history, forget our connection to the seasons. After this, you worked to entrench Section 35 in the Canadian Constitution. You worked to end the season of hunting and restore the season of sharing. But seasons always return in waves to the shore of Turtle Island. They ebb and flow in our conversation from year to year. And at Canada 150, we recognize that our nations reach back 10,000 years without commemoration. But this is a lesson of dis this is the season of discovery, a new land with a new people, with old ideas. The relationship that began has never really started. We coexist at times waiting for the demise of our culture and our language, our history. In this season, we see eclipsing the world with strife and struggle and devastation. We recognize we have lived through the seasons before. This open season in, on more than just rights, but bodies. The hunting season, not in name, but it is hunting nonetheless. And the kills are many, from those fleeing war zones to those fleeing environmental collapse, to those here at home missing and murdered, to those in prison cells to those overdosing on our streets and homes, to those ripped out of system in care. This is the season when if you are assimilated, you are no longer part of the problem, when you may not be hunted anymore, allegedly, just fit in. But we are here, still in this open season, the season of openness. Makia, Makoche, Mapiaska, using your traditional names proudly that were never forgotten. And we renew the circle of this life, the cycle of these teachings that you left for us in ceremony, the memories that hold fast, and the reminder that there is always another season, a reminder to keep the seasons holy for the next generation.